Hallo miteinander. I'm Geshidi 6 and this is the pre-sequel to Genso Wanderer called in Japanese. Lotus Labyrinth R is another roguelite RPG made by Aqua Style. It's somewhat of a remake as it's based heavily on Miracle Super Party, a game even older than Genso Wanderer, from an era when Aqua Style roguelites were untranslated and therefore practically unplayable for us. Now you may remember that I've made a video about Genso Wanderer and that my opinion on it was actually sort of mixed. However, that video aired while I was still actively playing the game and it continued to grow on me afterwards. That is why I was still interested enough in the series to get Lotus Labyrinth. The first thing to catch anyone's eye here is that this dungeon is crowded. It still is even after we've dispatched the initial enemies, because we have a party of 12. Yes, protagonist Tenchi has brought 11 friends to this dungeon dive, surprisingly she has friends, and that's not even the game's maximum. 24 girls is the size that the eldest daughter's battle harem can grow to. This absurd party size was in fact the big selling point of Lotus Labyrinth R before it released. While you were an adventuring duo in Genso Wanderer, here you command an army. Such a crass change is pretty exciting, but could lead to some issues. More on that later. Right now, our party is divided into two sub-teams with one leader and five followers each. The team leaders are the only ones we can directly control, and one press of a button switches between them. That switch doesn't even use up a turn. Your protagonist will always lead team number one, the other leaders could be anyone you recruit. The only other restriction is that no changes can be made to roles and lineup in the middle of a dungeon. This whole system of teams and members extends to your enemies as well. Foes with purple stars over their heads are leaders. If you take them out first, their companions will vanish with them. That is about the most important rule to know of in this game, and another one that also applies to us. Don't let your team leaders be killed, active or AI controlled, as their whole entourage will wipe out. Lotus Labyrinth isn't just about battle, it's also a game where there's lots of loot. We've already found money, a weapon, We've even bought a spell card from Rinosuke. When you have no use for something like this heavy stone plus one, you can dismantle it for materials and its enhancement points, which you can then add on to equipment you are actually wearing. This mechanic replaces Genso Wanderer's Nito Fusion. It's a lot simpler but also not quite as exciting, as almost no items have special seals in them. The materials I mentioned are used to permanently rank up individual companions. Gathering them is really important, because a character's rank puts a hard cap on the level they can reach in a single dungeon dive, as well as a limit to the damage they can deal with a standard strike. A few folks in our party are rank 4, but most of them are still at 3 which is nonetheless really powerful when you measure it up against the dungeon we are currently in, the admin core. You can also assign team skills in this team menu here. Any team has five customizable slots to strengthen its members. One of the ones we are using is called Teachings of Bound Prevention. That is a really helpful skill to bring for the admin core, as its boss inflicts the bound ailment very frequently. Equipment is something you'll find in most RPGs, but it's handled very unusually here. 
You have a lot of slots. Potentially you can wear up to 10 weapons, 10 armors and 10 charms. Not only is it quite funny to imagine a single person being so excessively kitted out, but it's assumed that every party member shares your loadout and its stats. Because of that, equipment is at least as impactful as team skills. So about this admin core that we are exploring, in the top right it says that we are on floor 17 of 20. For the standards of Gensa Wanderer, this dungeon size wouldn't be too impressive. The starting dungeon of that game already had 38 floors. But for Lotus Labyrinth, 20 is already uncommonly large. The thing is, this game has a really slow, even gentle start. The first few dungeons only have 6 or so floors on average and overall feel very tutorial-esque with how quickly they go past. The admin core is greatly raising the stakes compared to that. But is that enough? I've seen a couple of reviews for Lotus Labyrinth and some are surprisingly unkind. It's been called too easy uneventful and even boring. Of course you're not getting my verdict so early in the video, but it is peculiar that Gensa Wanderer immediately flung you upon a monumental task, a dungeon so mean you will likely escape during your first few attempts. Yet here you're riding on training wheels for a long time. Floor 18 starts off with a story cutscene and everyone's favorite Kappa Engineer. What's the plot? Why are we going where we're going? Well, not only are we curious about places with random explosions, but Sanai and Tenshi are exploring a virtual cyber world. It is populated by copies of Gensokians called Cyber Originals, of which we've befriended two, Akiu and Kozusu. They have gone missing, and we suspect them in the depths of this facility. We can see on our map that the enemy density here is massively scary. This 18th floor is always a single room pan pandemonium. Those will be even more intense than the regular pandemonium events you'll occasionally come across. We should be able to manage, as not only are we fairly overpowered, but one of our companions, the PC-98 version of Remu, fired off a fantasy seal and cleaned up most of the floor for us. Only the tankier enemy types like Merlin San survived that. And with how wounded they are, it'll be easy to mop them up. The blue glow signifies that the pandemonium was purged, no new enemies will spawn on this floor. Now to pick up all the materials they left, which is probably going to take us longer than surviving the pandemonium itself. A couple of words on our party members. The roster you recruit in Lotus Labyrinth is huge, but everyone has individual active and passive powers to make them stand out. Tenchi as a protagonist has four completely unique types of Danmaku to spend power points on, so by default she is among the top performers. Next up we have a DLC character, Shiki Eki. I haven't tested it out, but I think she backstabs and kills you if you dare to steal from a shop when she's around. Also part of Team 1 is dresses like a pimp John. please don't call her John. There's the already mentioned classical Remu, complete with Genji, perfect and elegant Sakuya, who I'm probably never going to pull in Toho Lost Word, at least I have her here. And in the back is Keiki. If you put a Santa hat on her, she'll be a Christmas Keiki. Team 2 is led by the first companion you get in Tenshi's campaign, Iku. She's very easy to bag. 
Those are her actual words in the game, not mine. Neighboring her is Woofer Momiji, who is really competitive with Aya in this interpretation. Unsan and his hitbox Ichirin are in the center. Then we're visiting a farm. Even if you praise Kutaka, only eggs will come out. And Urumi, a Tohozun created to prove to us he still knows women have memories. Last but certainly not least, we have Kogasa. Her artwork in this game is just about the doofiest looking I've ever seen, which at the same time makes it the most adorable. The exit of this floor is a boss portal, reminding us that we should take this last chance to prepare. Dokudami tea and power medicine are ideal items to strengthen yourself for what's ahead while you're still not in the middle of the action. Just like in its predecessor, consumables play a huge role in Lotus Labyrinth. It's very important that you learn what items are the most vital, stock up on them, and use them when they matter most. Healing and buffing potions usually affect a whole team, so they're more practical than ever. We've got another cutscene, and honestly, I love seeing these. Aqua Style has always been strong with their presentation and soft factors. In the cutscene itself, though, nobody is having a good time. These are the cyber originals we were looking for, not the actual Gensokians Akio and Kozusu, and they seem to be fighting each other. In an earlier mission, they both sacrificed themselves to save Tenchi and Sanae, and were in turn destroyed by cyber enemies. This cyber world has the logic of a video game, so they were able to respawn. Alive, but by no means well. Kozusu seems normal enough, but Akio sounded like she was having a battle with her own sanity. Already up until now, strange things were happening in the game world. Cyber enemies were able to violate rules that they shouldn't, as if there were bugs and glitches. As if the game was made by Bethesda and CD Projekt Red. That's why Nitori was with us earlier, by the way. She's also the real deal from Gensokyo and trying to fix the admin system. Why go so far for some half-baked virtual reality game? Well, there's a bit more at stake here. The game world is called WRS, World Replication System. It's not on a PC or console, and it has no servers. The WRS creates a pocket dimension in reality, but there's unintended overlap. The Gensokian Akio and Kozusu, for example, fell into a coma when their cyber originals were first killed. Interesting plot device. Let me sum it up. <clears throat> you die in the game, you die for real. Anyway, I've mentioned that both Tenshi and Sanai are protagonists. You can choose who you want to be at the start of the game, but at some point you're forced to catch up with the campaign of the other one. Sanai was my first pick, so that explains why we seem a little overqualified for this dungeon now. In said Sanai's story, it would be Kozusu who is possessed by the rogue admin system instead of Akyu, as it's becoming more and more obvious that's the case. We would also have a different boss fight from the one we are but seconds away from. Kozusu seems extremely emotionally invested here. How peculiar for a cyber original, a mere copy, a fake who can't possibly have any real feelings, right? We'll let her help, of course. It'll be needed for Berserk Akio Hieda, our opponent's new title. <laughs> a 
and with a flash, we take control. Berserk Akio is a single foe who uses magical calligraphy skills to empower herself. 12 against 1 might seem a bit uneven, but bosses like her are resilient, plus Akio can zap multiple targets per round even if they're a few tiles away. A returning go-to item against bosses is the Swift Medicine. It's always helpful to squeeze out more attacks per round, even if a full team already has 6. When I'm approaching a boss, I always try to nudge my companions to surround them. As mentioned, your team leaders are your heart piece, try not to have them tank hits unnecessarily. It's a better idea to have them shoot Danmaku from a distance. We checked our team strategy setting there because Iku stayed unintendedly passive somehow. I tried to move her in manually, but it was so late it almost didn't matter anymore. It's over. What an easy battle. The 19th floor of 20 is finished. How suspicious. I want to go back to how Lotus Labyrinth counts as easy. Too easy for some. While there's something to that, I chose to show you the admin core because it is known as the first noticeable difficulty spike. As many others, I had my first total party wipe here. Obviously, I had much worse equipment and lower ranking party members back then. Oh no, it looks like Kozusu's kind and caring nature has condemned her to a big mistake. Akio isn't just holding her hostage, no, it's much worse. Our friend is corrupting, being assimilated even. We could briefly tell that behind the blackness her form had changed. Aquastyle keeps returning to the idea of your friends getting possessed by evil. It is of course quite cliché, but I can't say it's not effective. Let's raise the curtain for Kozusu Altar. Her design is so good and creepy. In her sprite, she will be riding and floating on a large bell like the one she keeps in her hair. That could be really cute, but the brass is all rotten and chipped. And just wait until you've seen her spell card cut in, it's the stuff of nightmares. I somewhat pity Akiu. The child of Miyare's evil form looks slightly more goth than she normally does, and apart from a dirty smirk, that's all she has. Nitori gives us a small hint here to ignore the cyber forms. Other instructions will come during the cutscene, but they basically amount to that you're not meant to bash Akiu's and Kozusu's faces in. Our true objective is still to fix the rogue admin system. All dungeons in Lotus Labyrinth have three optional clear conditions that you get prizes for meeting. They're represented by golden stars. For the admin core, the first star is to win with all your party members alive, the second is for sparing both Kozusu and Akiu, and the third for sparing at least Kozusu. Basically, defeating Kozusu from here on out disqualifies you from two bonus stars, Akiu only from one. We'll therefore try to go easy on the girls during what is about to unfold. The music you're hearing now consists of the introductory notes for the boss's track, which is my favorite theme in the entire game. It perfectly encapsulates the feel of an epic final boss. Its title is Voice of Despair. Can you believe something called that has nothing to do with Danganronpa? Alright, it's on. Our prime target is Adam0930. It's a huge, stationary pillar made up of 3x3 three three tiles. Each tile is vulnerable and affects the same single health bar. 
Area of effect attacks are therefore especially recommended. Akio still specializes in buffing, but it's usually Kozusu and Adam that she boosts. Kozusu can grow huge spider legs out of her rotten bell, and concentrates on inflicting ailments and damage. An extremely strong tool against Adam is the spell card Preparation Star Ritual to Call the Godly Winds. Once we use it, there's a green field on the floor. Any of our units standing in this field will acquire random buffs and have ailments removed every turn. On the other hand, enemies will have their buffs removed and continuously contract ailments. That is why Kozusu is currently blinded, for example. The Star Ritual is one of Sanai's spell cards and only drops while she is your protagonist. So the ones we have are all from that past era. This ownership luckily doesn't prohibit anyone from casting it though. The field lasts three turns, but it always goes out with a bang. Any enemy that's still in it takes massive damage as the field vanishes. There it is. And that devoured about two-thirds of Adam's health, as all nine tiles of him were affected. Unfortunately, the spell also knocked out poor mind-controlled Akio. We may be on top of the battle, but its ideal outcome has been flubbed. We could have done a few things better. I chose to throw a Thunder Talisman at an inopportune time when Adam had defense buffs. Normally, this is very effective against him, but the splash damage hurt Akio much more. Generally, Kozusu and Akio were able to tie up and tank a lot of our companions. I should have unequipped more weapons until enough of our friends had been led next to Adam. Nonetheless, the crazy computer gets repaired by Nitori, and this mindless killing machine is being turned back to who she once was, innocent little Kozusu. Aqua Style definitely aims for a bit of Yuri romance between Tenchi and cyber original Kozusu. Non explicit, of course. For Sanai, it's Cyber Original Akio who will have the more emotional connection to you in this cutscene. The Gensoki and Akio and Kozusu don't have much of a role in this story, apart from being reported to fall into a coma. I dread to imagine what they would think of this whole chapter, where some folks they barely know take copies of theirs as virtual girlfriends. Especially with Kozusu, who I'm pretty sure has never had contact with our bratty Celestial, that has to come off as beyond creepy. Hopefully all of this will forever be kept a dirty secret from the human village. The virus attack or whatever it was has been thwarted, so it looks like we are having a happy ending. Or are we? Sadly, it's about to turn bittersweet. You do indeed see the credits directly after this mission. In this series, however, this doesn't mean much. In Gensa Wanderer, the staff roll came suddenly after the first dungeon, and here too, this marks maybe the first third of the game's content. But it is a good place to set a milestone here, due to the difficulty and overall tension. Both Tenshi and Nitori are glitching out now. This is because they're being kicked from the server, or pocket dimension. But why? In Tenshi's case, it might be because of spamming too much poggers in chat, or just excessive trolling and profanities. That would suit her. But no, as we just heard, we are being removed as intruders due to our meddling. Worse yet, permabanned. Our time in the cyber world is coming to an end, or at least until Nitori discovers what a VPN is. Perhaps eased VPN, 
Blah blah blah. If you set your location to say Botswana, you can finally watch your favorite show on Webflux. I am not actually sponsored by anyone. As both this cutscene and our video is wrapping up, let's return to the big question how Lotus Labyrinth R is as a game, as well as a continuation of its series. Honestly, I've had a really good time with it, and I'm still having one. However, saying that it's better than Gensa Wanderer, because my road to liking that one has been much rockier, would be unfair. It's not actually that simple. Lotus Labyrinth is more beginner-friendly, has less intricate mechanics, and also has trouble finding its pace. Genso Wanderer, on the other hand, is more fleshed out and frustrating. The thing about me is that I hadn't ever dabbled into roguelites of a Shiren the Wanderer style before, so I think playing Lotus Labyrinth as my first one, and only then Gensa Wanderer, would have been a much healthier order. One more thing that makes Lotus Labyrinth more approachable is that in case of a total party wipe, you have the option to restart on the same floor. You are not automatically booted out of your two-hour dungeon dive. With that, I've said pretty much all I could think of saying about this game. Overall, I really enjoy it. I'm Geshidi6, this was Lotus Labyrinth R, bis bald.